Hi, I'm Denise Schwab, Extension Beef Specialist in Northeast Iowa, and I'm here to visit with you today about developing replacement females. We all know that the cost of developing those females is probably one of the, the biggest expenses in our cow herd, so we want to guarantee that what we're doing is done right and will give us the best likelihood for success. Our goal really is to have that heifer um, have her first calf by at least two years of age, but in order to do that, we need to make sure that she's reaching puberty by at least 12 months of age so she can conceive by 15 months. And then our goal is to make sure she has a live calf every 365 days for at least the next five years. So we need to think about how long is it going to take for her to recuperate after that, that burnt parturition. And, and we need to be, keep her in the herd for at least five years to recoup our investment. We all know that there's lots of factors that affect puberty. If you look at this very, very busy slide here, you see that there's lots of components that affect that hormonal system. But early work research by Wilt Bank and also with by Lemonager in the 80s really narrowed this whole endocrine system down to three factors that affect puberty. Age of the animal, the growth coming up to that puberty, and her nutritional plane of, or, or plane of nutrition. Some of this early work done in the 70s was to look at what is the minimum level of growth we need on that animal. And they had a, a comparison where they, they had uh, developing heifers that were gaining either a half a pound, one pound, or a pound and a half uh, per day. And what they saw is those heifers that gained a pound and a half a day reached estrus at a younger age and a heavier weight than either those heifers that were developed at a pound a day gain or a half a pound a day gain. But when we come down here and look at their conception rate, particularly in that first 20 days of the breeding season, we see twice as much, twice as many heifers conceive in that medium and high gain group versus the low gain group. And when we look at their total conception rate, we see a much bigger difference of the 86 or 7% versus the 50% of those heifers that were actually bred and conceived. Some of this early work was looking, do we have a minimum rate of gain that those heifers need to develop? Is there a minimum age? Is there a minimum weight? And that led to more, more questions as we went through this, but the, the, the conclusion was really that those heifers should be um, reaching a target weight of about 60 to 65 percent of their mature weight at breeding and about 85 percent of their mature weight at calving. So if we want to think about an example, if we take a December heifer that's weighing 550 pounds, we want to breed her about mid-May, so that's about 165 days. If her mature weight is, is expected to be 1,300 pounds, and that would be obviously based on her, her dam's weight as well as her sire weight, then 65% of that 1,300 pounds mean we want to have her weighing about 845 pounds at breeding time. So that's a, a gain of 295 pounds over 165 days, or about a 1.8 pounds per day gain. That would be our target to have her reaching that 65% at breeding season. So how do we get her there? Well, one of the questions early on was, do we have to have her grow fast, grow slow and catch up later, a steady plane of growth? So uh, Freetly and others in 2001 did a study at the U.S. Meat Animal Research Center in Nebraska and they looked at those three different types of growth patterns. Where they had one group that would, um, they all started about the same, and this is based on their targeted gain. One group that had a steady rate of gain, that 1.8 ballpark, all the way up to breeding season. Another group that they put in a dry lot and fed um, additional energy to have them grow fast, reach close to their 65% uh, of weight, and then grow slowly up until breeding season and another group that then grew very slowly, say using a, a corn stalk a backgrounding type of a system, and then had a lot of growth at the end of the season and tried to compare how those animals did once they reached the, the breeding season. What they found is it really didn't make much difference. As long as they all reached this, this target weight at breeding season, there was very little difference between those three groups of animals in terms of conception rate. Now we do have to add there were some differences in this group that was gained slow and then sped up in terms of calving size, calving difficulty, but in terms of conception, they were all there at about the same point in time. So that raised some additional questions and as we've, we've looked at this growth pattern over time, 
started to question whether our animals are different today than they were when this research started in the 60s and 70s. And so another study that was done in Oklahoma looked at when do those animals actually reach puberty. And so this group of heifers were fed to reach different end weights, different targeted, and these are the percentage of their mature weight to see when they actually started to cycle. And they were determined by that um, in terms of, of the, the hormone levels in their blood, as well as then gone on and, and looked at calving or uh, conception rates. And what they found is that by the time the animal reaches about 55% of their mature weight, somewhere here in the 55% um, of those animals were cycling uh, by the time they were exposed to the bull or were AI bred. When we get up here into the 65%, 91% of those animals were already cycling prior to being exposed. The question is then, do we really need to put that additional feed in from 60 to 65% of their mature weight? And what are our odds there in terms of making that happen? So just one of those things that we're looking at um, currently, but again, if they're not cycling, they obviously can't be bred. So let's look at another study that's, that's more recent, and this is done um, at, at Nebraska, where they really were looking at what is that minimum um, target weight we need to look at. And so this is a three-year study that they did. They used Mark Heffers, and they developed him. The target was either 55 or 60 percent of mature weight. And then they put the bulls with them for a 45-day breeding season and collected data on these cows out through their fourth pregnancy. So it's been a long-term project to do that. What they found is, is their goals were 55 to 60 percent of mature weight. They ended up the, actually reaching 53 percent on the smaller group and 58 percent of mature weight on the upper group. Um, their gains were between one and one and a half pounds a day. Their pre-breeding weight, obviously we see about a 50 pound difference here in their breeding weight. So those heifers that gained more, weighed more. There were a higher percent of those heifers cycling, 85% versus 74. But when we look at the conception rate at 45 days of, of a breeding season, we really didn't see any difference here. Statistically, no difference. Numerically, maybe a better incentive for those lighter developed heifers. So basically, though, looking at 90% of those heifers were bred, regardless of which group they were in. Um, they followed these on through to, to calving season, and, and both were in about a condition score 5 at calving season. So obviously, this group that was developed to a lighter weight had to be fed harder or longer or additional grain from uh, breeding season up to pre-calving time. But we saw no difference in calf weight. And as you follow these calf heifers through their second pregnancy, third pregnancy, and fourth pregnancy, we really saw no difference between those heifers. So that leads us to wonder, do we need to develop them to that heavier weight? Um, what they found here is that by, by developing them to only 55% of their mature weight, it did decrease the cost. Obviously, our feed costs were less. We only fed them. Um, uh, to 55% or actually 53% of their weight. So it cost $22 a head less. No difference in pregnancy rate. No difference in calf weight. Uh, a slightly decreased mature weight, although not much, and did not really have any impact on pregnancy rates. And required, but it did require more feed to go from that pre-breeding 53% of their mature weight up to that final target still of 85% of mature weight at calving season. So we didn't feed as much feed early, but we did have to feed that much additional feed later to get them caught up. So our target is 65% of mature weight. Um, that may be changing, so keep your eyes and ears open as time goes by and more research comes through. We may look at that lighter weight. However, just remember that there's not much margin of error in that either um, related to our wet, muddy springs in Iowa and, and some of our challenges with put in condition on heifers in the wintertime. But we still had a targeted weight of 85% mature weight at, at calving season and a target of, of 5 to 6 in terms of body condition score at calving season. So we have them in good shape going into calving. 
Um, part of it goes back to this study, too, that looked at what was their body condition score prior to calving, just prior to calving, and what was happening to their weight at that point. So if we were in a thin condition score prior to calving, can we make that up? And if so, what impact does that have on the following pregnancies? In this study, we had cows or heifers that were either a 4 to 5 body condition score prior to calving or a 6 to 7, which is really where we'd like to see them. And then it looked at three different ration planes. One is where they're losing weight, so say a very, very severe um, muddy spring that's cold and wet and, and causing them to lose weight where they're increasing weight but less than a body condition score a month, so, so a, a very slow increase in weight, or a, more than a body condition score increase in weight. Can we bring them up to, to our, our ideal um, and how fast can we do it? What they saw is that we can increase the pregnancy conception rate of following pregnancy by having an incline inclining nutrition level going into the calving season. However, it's much lower than those cows that were already in a body condition score six or seven going into the calving season, where we see um, 85 to 90 percent rebreeding rates. So kind of the moral of this story is if cow heifers are thin going into calving season, we can still improve our conception rate by increasing the nutrition in that last month or so we won't get them up to the level we'd like at a six or seven, but we can at least improve that growth as we move forward. So in summary, our target is to be have those heifers at a 65% of their mature weight going into breeding season. That's going to ensure their, their maturity or increase the odds that they are mature and cycling prior to breeding and increase our conception rates at breeding season. And then we want to continue to grow those heifers at, at, at a level that will achieve 85% of their mature weight by calving season. Um, that's going to help us to decrease that postpartum interval so that those cows recycle and reheal up to be ready to cycle, increase our chances for that second conception, and increase longevity in the herd. If you have additional questions related to heifer development, I hope you'll look at the rest of the videos in this series or visit with one of your extension field specialists. Thank you.